In the words of Nelson Mandela, the youth of today are the leaders of tomorrow. There's no better way to uplift them than to provide them with a solid foundation, which in this case is education. Stay tuned as for until the end of the episode tonight because I'll be chatting again with Nigel Arenser to explore the sought-after home buying masterclass. This will definitely make your first-time home buying experience better. This is the Private Property Podcast. I'm Dumi. Welcome. Today I'm talking to a young lady who is highly driven, is a skilled at facilitating customer relationships, and tonight is going to be talking to us about her journey. She has a BCom in marketing and a proud real estate agent at Ricky Vango Properties. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a warm private property podcast welcome to Kateho K Monareng. Hey K, how are you? Hey, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and happy Youth Month to you. Thank you for having me here. I think I forgot my school uniform. <laughs> yeah, I didn't give I'll you I'll do the well. <laughs> <laughs> so we are talking um, uh, young people in property, and this is sure. your fifth year in the property market. Yes. Um, I'll jump straight into the conversation and ask you, what do you think sets you apart from the other uh, real estate agents? I mean, you said it yourself when you said um, highly driven with customer relationships. I think the big mistake that real estate agents do is when they get someone, the first thing that they think of is commission, you know, but I'm all about why did you come to K in the first place to inquire about property. So I'm all about um, making sure that I build that relationship with that potential client and build that property portfolio with, with them. And furthermore, I mean, people see Netflix and they see these amazing, beautiful properties, you know, taking people through viewings. Mm. Uh, but there's actually more to real estate as a real estate agent than that. You know, it's more technical. It's patience more than anything. So I've learned so much patience, perseverance, and also just learned to be patient, even when I have um, potential customers, buyers, and sellers. Sure. And, you know, with the property market becoming a very big pool of investment, you know, we've sure. got buyers as well yeah. as sellers. Um, who are the people that you represent mostly and how is it different in terms of service offering? Well, lately it's been sellers. Okay. It's been, I mean, sorry, buyers. Um, sellers are really just holding on to their properties because of obviously the, the current economic state that we're in. People are really reluctant to sell. Um, people are actually broadening their uh, um, investments to renting out their apartments, whereas um, buyers, on the other hand, see opportunity to buy. In as much as it's not really a good time to buy, I can say that. But, I mean, when we had the, the rough economic um, climate, I think it was in 20, 2003, 2004, um, people still went out in numbers to buy their properties. You know, so I'm sitting with a lot of buyers that want to buy properties mm -hmm. that are not really scared to go out there, even with what we're faced with. And on the other hand, I have sellers who don't want to sell, but rather are actually thinking of other ways to generate more income in the property market. Nice. Um, thank you so much for that. Uh, and being so young, how do you navigate all of these challenges, you know, in the, that, that the property industry presents? Sure. How do you do that? <sighs> I, could, I think I could say a, mouth, a mouthful with what you're asking me. But yeah. what I've learned as well is to, I think I'll go back to my first statement when I talked about um, patience, you know. One thing that I will do is I'll ensure that there's evaluations that are done in the property, um, in your property. If you approach me, I'll, first thing is why. Why Why do you want to sell? What are your reasons? I look at your, your portfolio. When was your last purchase? And how many properties do you have? What's in it for you? So it's not really about the sale for me. It's more of a win-win situation for both of us because I also want yeah. the commission. But um, it's, it's a win-win for both of us. So as a young professional in the industry, um, I've also learned to build that kind of relationship. And I think I've also um, made it a point where I help a lot of people. And that's why I even started my own company, K Property Consulting, because I have a large number of people coming to me because of the relationships that I've built with people and um, my clients. Sure. And, you know, uh, you're talking about property investors yeah. and this is like a business. So they are essentially entrepreneurs sure. and a lot of them consider networking to be one of the most important aspects of a business. Yeah. So what networking tips would you give somebody who comes to K Properties and is like, listen, I want to know um, where, where I can get tips to share with aspiring investors. I sure. mean, apart from watching our podcast, what yeah. other thing can they do? 
apart from binging on, <laughs> on the podcast with popcorns and all, um, I think the, the big thing would be your biggest why. What is, what is your biggest why? And with me, my biggest why was to um, build those relationships. And I think if I could express it a little bit more further, it, it would be for my current um, customer base and my current clients to actually know what they're getting themselves into. You know, it's not always about selling. It's not always about um, buying. But if you're going to invest in property, you need to understand the market. How are we doing as, as, as a nation? How are we doing economically? You know, is it really a good time for you to invest? Is it really a good time for you to make that purchase? You know, because it's not just about you owning 500 properties or 20 properties. If they're not generating income, you are not running a business. You are not an entrepreneur, but you're actually losing out on a lot. Thank you so much for that, Kay. You know, thank sure. you so much for taking our time to come to talk to us and young people and inspiring young people about getting into the property industry as investors, even as real estate agents, people who are just sure. going to be players in yeah. the industry. Thank you so much and all the best with your future endeavors. Thank you. And next year I'll be here with my school uniform. So <laughs> make sure you do tune in, guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Remember to take part in the competition. 500 Rand is up for grabs and Nigel will be announcing that later. So if you want to get that 500 Rand, start sharing now. And it's almost time for us to wrap up. But before we do that, let's take a look at Lucy's story about how she got into the real estate industry. Lucy's 25 and she's from Cape Town. She lives with her mom and two younger brothers. She's an account manager at a, at a company and her mom just retired. Her two younger brothers are in primary school, so she is essentially the sole provider for her family. Lucy always wanted more from life and saw that she definitely needs a second source of income. Despite receiving a decent amount of money as a salary, it was still hard for her to pay for everything and make ends meet. Lucy had always been interested in property, so pursuing a career in real estate came naturally for her. She then joined the Real Estate Association and began networking with other investors and business owners. She attended property seminars and started educating herself on the subject. Soon after, she was able to purchase her first home. She says, purchasing a home was the best decision I have ever made. I was initially concerned because this meant I would have to spend my money. But being around investors helped me make smarter decisions. We've, heard, we've all heard the expression, birds of the same feather flock together. And this is essentially what Lucy did. Well, that's it, folks. And you, remember, you never stop learning because life never stops teaching. And as promised, Nigel is on the call to talk to us a little bit more about the first time home buyers masterclass. Nigel, good evening and thank you so much for joining us once again. Good evening again to me, and it's an absolute pleasure. I always enjoy uh, having time with you guys at Private Property on these podcasts. Thank you so much. And just as we did Wednesday, we're going to jump in straight to the questions and, you know, give uh, the viewers at home a little bit more information about the first time home buyers masterclass. So what is it in a nutshell and what can people expect from it? Well, quite simply put, um, we're going to spend about three to four hours uh, talking face to face with all the attendees. Um, specifically about the different aspects of purchasing your first home. That's about all that we're going to be doing. Sure. And, you know, talking about that, there are a lot of mistakes that first-time home buyers make, you know. Can you take us through two or three that they do or make? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. There are two big mistakes that most first-time buyers make. In fact, not even first-time buyers. I can tell you that um, in my uh, own experience, um, I've made these mistakes more than once. <laughs> um, the first one is not doing a property inspection. If you don't do a property inspection, you won't know about all the faults that are in the property. There may be some plumbing issues. There may be some uh, sewage issues, uh, your roof. Uh, there may be a leak. Uh, there may be some uh, structural damage or electrical problems. So that's the, uh, the, one of the big ones is uh, doing a proper home inspection before you sign the documents. And uh, because once you've signed the documents, you will notice in your offer to purchase there is a clause that speaks to the, the fact that you have done an inspection of the home. So if you sign that offer to purchase and you have not done the inspection, then they can hold you to that. So that's the first one. And then the second one, which is probably even bigger, is that most first-time home buyers forget that the purchase price isn't the only money that you have to spend on the property. You also have to pay for the legal costs 
and possibly transfer duties if the property is over a million rand. And those payments are upfront in cash by you. The bank doesn't cover those. Um, even though some of the banks do now give 105% loans, uh, in most cases, you will not qualify for that. And you have to cover your legal costs as well as the transfer duties, which can work out to anywhere between 4 and 10% of the total cost of the purchase of the property. Sure. Thank you so much for that, Nigel. And let's let's jump into say what 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 can what speakers or who are the speakers that will be appearing at the masterclass and who can um, the viewers expect to see? Well, all right. So we've got five speakers, including myself. Um, I'll be talking about uh, a few genetic things, uh, but the most important one being uh, your clearing your credit score because a lot of people um, won't be able to qualify for a home if they don't if they've got a bad credit record. We have uh, Gareth Shepperson from Stegman's Attorneys. He'll be talking about the legal process. We have Andrea Tucker from uh, Mortgage Me. Uh, she'll be talking about how to apply for a bond. And then Sean Godway from uh, Diversity, who will be talking about the entire buying process. And then Kayla, who will be talking from uh, Private Property, will be talking about how to use the Private Property app to be able to find the right property for yourself and your family. A comprehensive list that you you seem to have there and i have it under good authority that there will be prizes won on the day so what kind of prizes should we expect if you if one is attending so some of the things that we we're giving away um for those who are interested in becoming property investors um, over and above just purchasing your first home edpf property academy is giving away a full pack to our master uh, investor course which includes uh uh, your training for three years, as well as mentorship and support services and funding for your property investment opportunity or access to funding anyway. We are giving away um, coffee vouchers. Uh, our partners at Cork Cafe have agreed to give away some coffee vouchers, uh, which we even thinking possibly of giving away um, a, a long term, maybe even for a whole year, uh, some free coffee. But uh, that's something that we will uh, decide on before the 25th. Um, and then uh, we've got some cash that we're giving away as well. So quite a few things already on the cards and some more to come. I'm definitely convinced, and I told you the other day, I am very convinced, and you will definitely be seeing me there. So thank you so much for sharing the, those nuggets about the first time home buyers um, masterclass. We're really, really looking forward to it. And you've got thank the you privilege very much again too. to. Oh, sorry. Apologies for that. You were saying something? <laughs> no, no problem. I was just saying thank you very much. Um, you've got the privilege tonight once again to announce the cash prize winner for, the, for that 500 rand, so you can take that away. All right, so uh, tonight's winner for the 500 Rand Cash Prize, which is sponsored by Private Property, and I hope I pronounce your surname correctly, Kay. Uh, the winner tonight is Kay Ramoshlale. Ramoshlale, yes, I think that's correct. Kay Ramoshlale, congratulations, and well done to you for the winning of the 500 Rand from Private Property. Thank you so much, Nigel, and thank you so much to you for staying till the end. We have reached the end of our episode tonight, and remember, a healthy dose of property information might just be what you need to get back on that property A-game. This is the Private Property Podcast. My name is Dumi, and from myself and the Private Property Podcast family, have a good night.